building a guitar with Showalter guitars, I'm building an Osage Orange and Sycamore OM uh, with my friend Steve. This is episode 12. Listen, I've been wrong on the episode numbers for a while because we've just been working every day and every day turns into a video. But today is episode 12 and in episode 12, yesterday we worked on the fingerboard. I still have super glue on my fingers. I hate, I, whatever, I'm a baby, I get it. But uh, yesterday we did the fingerboard, we put the frets in. Now there's still lots of fret work to do. But we're hoping to get towards some neck work and some other stuff. So, let's go see what Steve is up to. Steve's also working on a guitar. He is now building his, technically his third guitar, in the time that I've built my one. And so I think he's about ready to lap me again. So let's go see what he's doing. <laughs> what is that green stuff? Oh, it's not. Holy. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey, Steve. Hey, hey Joyce. Hey, hey. Whoa, look at this thing. I know. Oh, cool. uh, just cut the dovetail joint. And I'm fitting it. Okay. Man. So that was about the fastest cut and dovetail I've ever really? done. Yeah. I mean, to be right almost on the very first uh, take. <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, yeah, what, what, this one's 111? Yeah. I was just going to ask. That. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, cool, man. I love that cherry and sycamore. This is, is a cool guitar. All right, so this is episode 12. Yesterday I said 10, it was actually 11, today's 12. Wow. So, uh, anyway, what are we doing in episode 12? Well, you need to get your neck uh, dovetail joint. Dovetail day. And, uh, ooh, well, that'll take most of the time, probably. <laughs> okay. All right, let's get to it. Uh, at least do a little sanding on the end here where, mm -hmm. where the, it fits. Yeah. And then in between times, then you'll have start, start mm -hmm. to uh, sand around all the way around the outside. Mm -hmm. First time I guess I've seen the neck and the body together. Oh yeah. Yeah, I don't think I've done it. Yeah. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Did you see what I was uh, oh. working on over there? Yeah. I'm not cutting anything. I'm just starting just laying dreaming. out. Yeah, uh, and and trying to uh, make decisions on where those cuts. Can are. I show people that? Oh, look at that. Wow. That's the tree. So, we got a hunk of the tree. Yes. And so I'm trying to uh, lay it out, and I'm taking my good old time about making my first cut on this board because it's an expensive yeah. board. But so I got like, see all these cuts I'm, I marked off on here? Oh, so that's I'm how gonna, many? I'm going to get should get four sides out of this and four backs right here. Oh, there's something I hadn't noticed. There's a crack. I'm gonna have to put this on the other end. That's, I just see that crack right there. Oh boy, yeah. And then uh, I have, uh, I'd be able to get two fret boards out of this. Oh, you'll do fret boards. Well, so, I'm yeah. not necessarily going to put that in the same guitar. Yeah, but on another. But one. I would love to have that on That's cool. another guitar. But I think I was thinking, yeah, I could put almost 
all of wood be this for one of those guitars and the other one would be uh, back and sides yeah. only because I got a neck over here if you really wanted to you could do a, a neck fretboard back and if you really wanted to you could do the top but I wouldn't I don't think I want to do that because then yeah. I'd only be able to make one yeah yeah and that's what you'd want to do really I mean do a red spruce top or do something pretty yeah, yeah. Right. that's really exciting so come over here to our dovetail jig mm -hmm. just to cut these out uh, totally by table saw. Is that from your cabinet days? No, that was because that's how Ron Sharp did it. A little faster way with the router here. Have you ever seen the, I saw a thing recently about like how they, how they do x-rays, just x-rays on babies? That's what this reminds me of. I'll have to show you. Chest x-rays. <laughs> like they put babies in this little tube and like squish them up with their arms up. But that's what I feel like, you know, we spent so much time on this body and then we're just slowly lowering or raising it up in here. <laughs> I'll, I'll pull up a picture to show you. <laughs> did you make this jig or did you Yeah, something else? I did. <laughs> this is router number eight. <laughs> All right. There's that walnut. <laughs> and the dovetail, obviously, when you look at it, because I, I realize, oh, it can't come. You waited for it to slow down, and you don't pick it up, because it has to go back out that way. Yeah, I can't just take it out. Look, mm -hmm. I've already uh, gouged into this with the router getting yeah. it out of there yeah. before. So I gotta watch I don't keep coming into that. <sighs> there it is. Then, this is what I was talking about for setting up the uh, this cut for the end. Okay, see that? This, oh, got it. this does not fit. This, this needs to be tight against there mm -hmm. with a little gap here. And it's the other way around. Look at that. So, so the way that is right now, if I cut this joint, uh, it would be way high. Like way over. You need a neck, neck reset right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would say this piece of metal is on plane. Uh, with, with, this, with this board. With this flat board. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, so this piece of metal that's coming up out. It's connected to this. This whole jig helps you set the angle at which that could be either too far forward or too far back. So right now, we're set a little too far forward, and so if we did, the strings would be pretty high here and then very high by the time we got up the neck. That's a really clever jig. Yes, sir. Rich! Jeremy, how are you? Good. Hey, I'm actually, I'm standing here with Steve. Hello, Rich. Rich. Hi, Steve. How are you? All right. So we're we're sitting here working on my guitar, and because uh, we both I so watched your video series on it. Oh, cool, dude. I love I love that one that you got. So I'm I'm super glad you oh. you like it. Oh my gosh, you're so great. I haven't even had a chance to plug it in or anything like that. Oh. I'm, I'm sitting here, I, I'm a business owner, but I'm sitting here in between customers, noodling away on this thing and, and uh, not answering phones or doing my job, so. Yes, <laughs> we're doing our job right. I'm excited to call. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> cool. Well, Great. yeah, so, um, could, yeah, so you own, you're you part of a very small community of people that, of people that own Showalter Guitars. I'll soon be in there with you. 
but yeah, so Steve has I, mentioned, I, and I went. I'm super excited to be one of the owners, that's for sure. It's a, it's an honor and a privilege, and maybe you can tell craftsmanship when you pick it up, that's for sure. And I'm kind of a novice woodworker myself, so I appreciate all the different woods and time and effort that went into these things, so it's awesome, I appreciate it. Well, thank you, it's so good to have you aboard the uh, Showalter family. Oh, it's so great. Cool, mm -hmm. man. Love well, it, love it, love it. Cool, all right, well, have fun, and uh, we're gonna get back to, to, you'll be, we're filming a video right now, so you'll be in, this will be in the video. Oh, if you're okay with well, that. I appreciate that. That's, of course, that's super cool too. I've been a long time subscriber and watcher. Uh, and, uh, I've been watching the progress through this guitar of yours too. It's going to be awesome to see it done. Oh, cool. All right, Rich. Thanks, man. Have a good one. That's, right. that's cool. So it takes a little longer to set this end up. Yeah. because this bottom has to be trimmed then. But uh, boy, it's coming out really good. It's looking like a guitar right now. <laughs> Now, Whoa. now that's it. That looks like it's uh, not going to fit, but it's supposed to be loose. And we put sh uh, shims. Some shims in. Yeah. Uh, this is really good news. I'm lining up on the center line, and I'm taking it on up to the neck. And then this is center line here. A lot of times that doesn't end up that way. I got to work hard to get it. Yeah, centered, centered by making adjustments on this joint that's, and that's this great news. first time this is like mine was a, <laughs> yeah. uh, the two in a row i can't believe how wow. perfect uh, it was first that's perfect cut master of the craft <laughs> i'm finally learning how yeah. <laughs> after <laughs> but yeah who would have the per who would have the stick to do 111 <laughs> to then be like all right i'm starting to get it yeah right <laughs> So it's gonna be um, most centered if we push it all the way against this side so we put the wedges on this side. All right, so I uh, ought to have uh, some pieces of uh, Osage orange. I got a piece of wine.
<laughs> okay, yeah, don't waste any energy. <laughs> Actually, I forgot that I needed to do that last cut. <laughs> And even less energy. <laughs> right? <laughs> the sound of a guitar that only real guitars use hot hide glue. yeah right <laughs> yeah now don't do that that's what that's one thing i don't <laughs> i can't imagine that can you i don't know <laughs> well see i would have been willing to do that but all my teachers used tight bond yeah, I mean, it's, I think at some level you have, you, it is worth the conversation of, well, the best guitars in the world are the best sounding guitars used. Used, used. Yeah, and so you start getting around like, all right, well, let's get the closest wood. Let's just do everything. But I think yeah. it's like when people say, my guitar won't stay in tune and they put locking tuners on it. Like, it might help. But there's probably a lot of things Most that Most of the will, time, it's the humidity and the temperature it's going to do. Yeah, that. and the, your saddles, what strings you have, how you put your sat strings on. Yeah. But. Huh. Okay, so I use... Here's what I do. Now, I, I don't know if anybody else does this, but this was my decision. I, there are certain things that you want to be able to steam off. Mm -hmm. The bridge. Yeah. Uh, your top, maybe I do it, but I, I think I will never take a top off. Mm. But anyway, some people have, you know. Yeah. You might want to steam that off. Uh, there's only a few things right at the end of the project that you're putting the final pieces together mm -hmm. that you don't want to use this. You want to use the original type bond. It can be steamed off. Okay. This is waterproof. Yes, and not a chance. And I don't want it. I don't want my braces coming off. That's true. I'm gonna glue those with that. Not something that could be steamed off. Oh, that makes sense. Now that's the uh, clamp for that glue. That's the. That's it. Yeah. So that was so, the neck getting glued on. No, no, no. Okay, I didn't no. think so. So I'm putting that. Uh, I'm putting. So, yeah, that was the other thing. Like I put this glue on the, the uh, shims. Okay. And then the shims are so, not glued to the neck. It's got just it. the, they're just glued to the body. Now, if it ever needed to be a neck reset. You would steam it off. But those would stay but stuck. These should stay stuck. Okay. I mean, they may not, and it wouldn't matter. They usually would have to be replaced when you do yeah. a neck reset anyway. But, but I, I mean, that's the, that's the uh, logic that okay. I use. Uh, you know, for a little bit here, I told you last time, you was gonna be doing some piling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And so uh, you could be working on this just a little bit here okay. while you got a little time. Um, so let me pull the camera in closer. Oh yeah. Okay. Because yeah, so. it's it's really like the side to side they're okay, but as soon as you get on top. Yeah. 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 All right. So this has a little. Well, both sides of this file, it's made especially for this. Uh, this is a flat side and this is rounded. So normally I'm putting that rounded side down on, on the uh, okay. fretboard and then I'm going just rounding this up. Okay, so from the bottom edge up? Yeah. Okay. And you gotta, so you gotta do it on that side and you gotta do it on that side. I'll stay at this angle and just do them all up through okay. here and, and I switch. come back and do this okay. on the other side. Okay. Flat part here is a little sharp on the corner. Oh, got it. And you don't want that corner digging into your fretboard. Okay, I gotcha. So the rounded is safer. Uh, you do, I, I bring this over just a little further to the edge and then angle it a little more up. Okay. Uh, so you don't take a chance of cutting Got it. or scraping onto the top of your fretboard there. It's like a cat or something. I don't know. Last week when we are making this fretboard, Start up a table saw and all of a sudden a cat jumps up on the table. So who knows? Might be a cat around here. I just, I yeah. just as you were turning the doorknob. Just finished. Yeah. Wow. All right. So, give it just enough pressure that you can still slide it. If you, if you push too hard, you won't be able to slide it out of there. And that. Make sure you uh, keep this uh, the, the the cutting side this way, rather yeah, than turning yeah. over and hitting the body. <laughs> so what I'm saying, yeah, is don't ma don't squeeze it so tight that you can't pull. It. Okay. See, actually, it's not going to get much tighter because uh, if you look over here, it's 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 hitting. Here, so okay. we, now we need to we need to do some chiseling in there. Let me take it apart and let me show you. So I think the battery was dead. When, I, when you said that last thing. But this episode seems like it's a lot of Steve doing stuff because it is Steve doing a lot of stuff because this, you said that this is the most complicated part of this process. And uh, as much as I like being bad at things on camera for people to critique, <laughs> um, this just felt like, I mean, this is the right, so we're continuing to finagle um, with getting it just flush. And that's a, it's a detail I've never really thought about. That you have to have, I mean, properly flush. Because otherwise you'd get, and I've heard people call it like a boat ramp, uh, uh, or yeah, just a ramp when you come off the body, if these two aren't quite level. Like eventually the guitar will put so much pressure on that fretboard extension that you get these frets too high. So it's just this constant back and forth of chiseling, putting it on, wiggling it, squeezing it, and eventually it'll sit totally flush. 
But when we get the top flush, we're also going to get the back will hang over a bit. And so we're still going to have to make another cut here. I just and saved you, you a half an hour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Just, yeah, your experience, like what you can do just running around. <laughs> but yeah, so would you ever use the block on here to even these two out? Or is that to your... Well, uh, yeah, I have. Okay. I mean, it's uh, not real typical. Uh, but depends on what you end up with here. Mm -hmm. So like, it looks like, just looking at that without this, it's going to be alright. But I put this on there and you can just see, look at that. That's perfect. The, it doesn't go up or down. Oh yeah. It, it, a while ago, it, we had it rare, rare and way up like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I've heard is the... The boat ramp? The boat ramp. <laughs> yeah. I've had guitars that like get funky up here, but I never play a fretstone that high, but they get in the way. Yeah. Yeah. Make it sound like a sitar. Sitar. Like that really plinky Indian instrument. Oh yeah. Yeah. So now all we gotta do is trim this. And uh, is that what you wanna do is cut it? Uh, yeah, just above the trim there. Or the binding. Yeah. About that angle. Okay. Sort of, so you kind of continue this. Uh, Ooh, I've wondered, notes. okay, because I've wondered on like really high end guitars like Atkin, Waterloo, they'll do a compound, like it's one curve one way and a different curve the other way. And it's always like one of the tiny details I can see with like exceptional. So I think what they're doing is they're following the radius maybe of the mm. neck or they're mirroring mm. that here and then mirroring this radius. But well, you do, see, you have a radius here too, mm -hmm. so you know you you could have that, or maybe they're just following the radius, like in all three of those directions. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's even, and that's cut down. Now that's we just gotta cool. put the heel cap on. Okay. Seems like a good stopping place. Man, this is a lot of work. So in two hours, fit the neck, shape the neck, cut the dovetail, File the ends. Yeah, file the frets. Yeah. A lot of stuff going today. And uh, so this was episode 12. And um, yeah, this was, I, this is the most I've seen you in your element. Just moving and grooving. And I mean, it's, you know, like you joked a minute ago. Like I just saved you 30 minutes. Like, yes, there are many ways in which. <laughs> um, but these are things that just shows your mastery of doing so many of these and knowing how things work and knowing your own tools. So. Anyway, well, thanks for watching this video. I'm Jeremy, and this is Steve. If you have questions, comments, even some slanderous remarks, you can let us know in the comments down below. And um, yeah, we, we've got some questions. I think we'll do a question episode at some point once we, once we gather up some more. But um, it is really looking like a guitar today. Um, this is the first time I've seen the neck and the body yeah. together. Yeah, and then the biggest thing that makes it look like a guitar to me is then when you shape that neck. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. I'm, yeah, you can't hold on to this thing. I know. <laughs> yeah, it's like a, yeah, it's like a dobro it's right a now. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, thanks for watching. See you guys later. Make sure you're subscribed. Bye. For hollering the hills of Appalachia.
No, sir, you wouldn't know the name, but it's prettier than heaven and where I'm at the world and where I'm going.